it is Monday morning and I have the receipts of everything I did this weekend in the Silicon Valley to see what someone in their 30s is spending their money on and whether or not it's within budget. I stumbled upon the 50-30-20 rule as well as the FIRE movement and they both have entirely different budgeting ethos. So the 50-30-20 budgeting tool is more about your needs making up about 50% of your budget, savings 20%, and then wants 30%. Financial independence retire early movement tells you that you should be saving 50 to 75% of your money, and then the rest of it is on spending. So let's see how I did this weekend. And if you're new here, I'm Elise. I'm a dietitian in my 30s living in the Silicon Valley with my dog and my partner. Let's rewind to Friday. I was working from home all day taking patient calls. I also went to Pet Food Express to get my dog some more of her dog food. And for a month's supply of her dog food, it was $114 which thank God she's a seven pound dog because if she were any bigger, I would not be able to afford her freeze dried dog food. At the very end of the evening, I was waiting for my boyfriend to come back home from work so that we could go out for drinks. And we don't usually go out for drinks anymore. I think we used to do that much more frequently during the pandemic and we hit the bars. So that night we went to San Jose, the San Pedro area where there's a lot of restaurants and bars. So first round, he got us drinks and then second round, I took over. That night, the bill was around $40, $45 for two drinks at Paper Plane. The drinks, I will say, definitely really yummy. I don't know how I feel about drinks, two drinks being $45. In undergrad, I was very money conscious, and so I would always just get the beers or the wine because usually wine and beer are a little bit cheaper than cocktails. Now that I'm in my 30s, that doesn't really matter as much. If anything, I care more about how sweet the drink is. I really don't like very sweet drinks. Then we move on to Saturday and Saturday morning, I actually had planned a hike with my friend. I love this because it helps us really focus in on the conversation and connect with nature and just be undistracted. And also it's completely free. Well, and it's my favorite thing to do with people. I remember the first hike and walk I did with my friend was in high school. My friend who was a senior, I was a junior at the time, she wanted to go on a hike and walk with me and I thought, wow, that's an interesting activity to choose. I thought, wow, this is a lot of effort for a hangout. But that really set the precedent because ever since then, I've loved hiking and walking with friends. It is such a great way to have a conversation. As an adult, there's only a few people I would do this hike and walk with. I found that as long as you propose this idea to people and you try it out with them, it usually ends up being really fun, even the people that are not very outdoorsy. And then in the evenings after I recovered, I think I was laying on the couch for five hours. I was so exhausted after this hike. I finally perked up by dinner time and my boyfriend and I went out to Korean food. So we both got the kimchi tofu soup. He paid, so I got a delicious meal. The next day is Sunday and we woke up and had a lazy morning and I love Sunday morning farmers markets and I go to the same one that Emily Mariko goes to in Palo Alto and every time I go I think will she be here today? I got myself a bagel with cream cheese and my usual order is a plain or pumpernickel or egg bagel. I think those are the, the yummiest. I had a few bites but I gave most of it to my boyfriend. That was about $5. And then walking around the farmer's market, we got hungry and we stopped for a proper lunch at the Indian restaurant, Zareen's, and the naan was delicious. Everything about it was so yum. It was also freezing cold. I could barely feel my fingers. I think it was like maybe mid forties, high forties. So that meal really warmed us up. And I picked up the tab for lunch and that turned out to be about $45 for the two of us but it definitely filled me up until dinner time. I, was, I didn't purchase any groceries at the farmer's market, but my boyfriend stumbled upon this fern and he couldn't stop thinking about it. It's the size of me. This is the little fern that he picked up. It is quite something. He was the one that bought it and it turned out to be $45. And then we carried that off and off to Costco we went. I don't do Costco very often. To be quite honest, my boyfriend just got the membership card a few months ago. And before that, I hadn't stepped foot into Costco in at least five, if not 10 years. I only really went with my parents when I was in high school. The parking lot was 
out of this world hectic and the lines and the people inside, all I thought was I need to buy some Costco stock. I don't even care about the food inside. So the next week I did purchase one single stock for, for Costco and it was like almost $500. Costco stock is not cheap guys. So I went in for two very specific things. I went in for meat, specifically chicken thighs and chicken wings to meal prep with. And then two, I needed minoxidil. So I recently was filming a video, maybe you've seen it. It's the video on how I did Pilates for three years and my results doing it. And while I was filming myself doing Pilates, I could see bald streaks going through the sides of my hair. And recently when I was washing my hair, I saw a bald spot up here. Now this is a recent development. At first I thought, am I, do I have a nutrient deficiency? Am I not eating enough protein? What's happening? And then I remembered that I got COVID after my flight back from Nepal in October. And I think since then, I've really started to notice my hair falling out and these bald spots started to happen. I think last month in December, I was chatting with my friend on my hike and she had an experience with someone who also had this issue and they started minoxidil, which is Rogaine, and told me to go to Costco ASAP to get the Costco minoxidil because it's the cheapest. So you best believe I went straight to Costco to get myself minoxidil and protein, both kind of for my hair. And that totaled to be about $180. Sometimes I think about it and I think, am I actually saving any money from going to Costco? It doesn't seem like I am because if I were to just buy it in small amounts throughout the month at Sprouts or Trader Joe's, I think it would be cheaper. I don't know why, but just looking at that lump sum, that Costco receipt is so hard to swallow sometimes. I also went to Felipe's Market after Costco because I like the produce at my local market. I feel like they must be in contract with a lot of the farmers in the area because they get a lot of fresh produce that are super seasonal. I went there to get some of my basic veggies and fruit for the week and that was $32.12. Had I gone to Trader Joe's or Sprouts for the exact same ingredient list, it would have probably cost me $50. This past weekend, my total spendings was $421. I spent $321 on needs alone. And in the wants category, I spent only $91. Now for the most part, the weekends are where I spend the most. I don't really spend money on the weekdays because I have my meals already prepped. I make my own coffee and tea at home. Unless I'm online shopping or Amazon shopping, I'm not really doing much on the weekdays. In theory, if I just base my spendings off of my weekend spendings, I on average probably spend about 16 to $1,700. If I took my needs category, $328 times four, that gives me about $1,300 that I might be spending on the needs category every month. And if I divide that by my net income, that gives me 30%. So based on this one weekend's worth of spending, in theory, I might spend about 30% of my net income just on needs like groceries and Costco. <laughs> and then if I were to take this weekend's wants category, which was going out for drinks and eating out for lunch, then 91 times four gives us about $370. And $370 divided by my net income per month, that's about 9%. If we were to compare my spending breakdown compared to the 50-30-20 rule or the FIRE movement, you can see that my spending breakdown actually looks closer to the FIRE movement. And it is actually surprising. I really thought I was gonna be kind of like the 50-30-20 rule, but it's nice to see that I'm actually a little bit more thoughtful with my spending. The only thing that would drive a wrench into this theoretical calculation based on a lot of assumptions is whether or not I'm shopping for clothes or shopping on Amazon or buying skincare. If any of those things are happening that month, of course my total is gonna be higher and my wants category is gonna be much higher in percentage. And that definitely happens every month. I'm definitely buying new skincare monthly. I don't buy clothes on a monthly basis. I maybe buy one new piece of clothing every three to six months. Oh, and then Amazon. I definitely buy at least one thing from Amazon once a week, if not once every other week. So my wants category is probably higher than 8%. 
but I can't imagine it being more than 20%. The last thing that I forgot about is travel. For most people that would be categorized into the wants category. I say that's just a category on its own because that's the only thing that brings me joy these days. In reality, there's a lot happening. If I did not travel once in the year, I'm basically part of a fire movement squad. <laughs> But based on my retirement video, you will see that I use ChatGPT to calculate when I would be able to save $1 million if I were to max out all of my retirement funds and save all that I can. And I think it would still take me until I'm 58. It's gonna take me another 20 years to save a million dollars. I definitely don't think I can retire early like people from the FIRE movement with the way I'm spending my money, even though it seems quite prudent. That's what I spend in a weekend in the Bay Area. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know how much you spend, if it's comparable, if your Costco runs are as expensive as mine. But until next time.